Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta, and today we will understand how to split the data into training and testing data set while running a random forest in regression analysis. So, if you talk about random forest, it's basically an ensemble learning method for classification, regression, and other tasks that operates by constructing a multitude of decision tree and training time. It's a supervised learning algorithm that is widely used in classification and regression problems. It builds trees on different samples and take their majority vote for classification and average in case of regression. Now let us try to understand this concept. When we are running a decision tree, number of times it is possible that you may get different output in different decision tree. So it is not possible for us to come on the common consensus. And therefore, the idea of random forest was floated up. Here, the concept is that we will be running this single decision tree maybe 500 times or 500 times, or 500 or 1000 times. So, there will be a jungle of decision trees, which is known as now random forest. Now, it may be possible that each decision tree will give you a different result, class 1, class 2, it's possible. Then, how to take the decision? So, in this scenario, say for example, the first decision tree gives result 1, result 2, and result n. So, either we can go for majority voting or averaging for final result. Now, how we can uh, split the data into training and testing data set and how we can measure the performance of this random ferris in rapid minor? Let's see. For this, first of all, I'll load the data hard one. I'll connect the spline here. I'll run. And you can see here, the attributes which are there are age, gender, chest pain type, resting blood pressure, cholesterol, fasting blood sugar, resting ECG, max HR, exercise, yes or no, old pig, ST slope. Now here, the problem given to us is a classification problem. So here, on the patient is having a heart disease, yes or no. So I want to make an algorithm on the basis of these attributes, which can classify the heart disease in the patient. So I'll first operator, which I'll consider is selecting the attribute. I'll simply drag it and drop it here. Now, why we are using this operator, let us try to understand. In the original data set, there may be many variables, but to construct the model, we want to consider only few of them. I request all of you to refer my previous le uh, lectures to understand the flow of series. Now I'll go here and activate the set role operator. I'll drag it and drop it here. In select attributes, I'll subset it, select attributes, and I'll only select those variables from which I want to make the model. So I'll consider here age, cholesterol, fasting blood sugar, heart disease, old pig, resting blood pressure. I'll transfer it here. Apply. In set rule, I'll have to specify the target variable. Basically, the random forest comes into the supervised learning technique in which we have to specify the target variable or the dependent variable. So our heart disease is a target variable and I want to label it. Make sure that the target rule is labeled. Then only the algorithm will run. The next thing which I have to do is split the data. So for this, I'll be going here and I'll be activating the split data. I'll simply drag it and drop it here. Split the data. Now, Disconnect this spline and activate the random forest from here. Drag it and drop it here. Connect this spline. At present, it is showing you the warning signal. Why? Because we have not specified that we want to split the data in what proportion. So activate this operator, go in edit enumerations, add the entry. So I want to specify that the 70% data will enter as a training data set at the entry. 
and the 30% data will be the testing data set. Click OK. So the 70% has gone into the algorithm. Now, whatever model which is being prepared from here, I will apply this model on the training data set. Therefore, I'll drag it and drop it, apply the model, I'll connect the model with model, and the testing data set will be passed through this. Now, the performance of the model is normally evaluated on the basis of testing data set. So, when you'll activate the performance operator, you will get many types of performance operator, like classification, binomial, regression. We very well know that this is a classification problem, and therefore I'll drop the classification problem here. Classification performance operator here. I'll connect label with label and performance with the result window and the model with the result window. When I'll press the play button, you'll get the results. So when you'll select tree, you can see that there are 100 trees which are there. Now to summarize the result, we'll have to go in the performance factor. And you can see here, 84 and 128. Basically, this is a confusion matrix which has been generated. So here, what is this 84? Let's try to understand. The person was not having the heart disease. This is this column for this. And the algorithm also predicted that is 100 the averaging of 100 decision trees, if we talk about it. They all, it also predicted that on the basis of these attributes, the, the patient is not having the heart disease. So our classification is accurate here. No, no. So 84 such cases are there. If I talk about this way, this cell, a person is having heart disease and the algorithm also predicted that yes, the patient is having heart disease. So 84 plus 128 are the correctly classified cases. But if I talk about this one and this one, so a person was having a heart disease, but the algorithm predicted that the heart disease is not present. And therefore, 24 cases are mis misclassified cases. A person was not having a heart disease, and here the algorithm predicted that the patient is having a heart disease. So what does this record? So in the column of no, we have we got the accuracy 68.29 percentage. In the column of yes, we got the classification accuracy 84.21 percentage. You can see in descriptions also the confusion matrix which is there. So for more videos on rapid minor, kindly subscribe to my channel. Please refer my playlist in which I have already uploaded many videos of rapid minor. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Don't forget to press the like button.